In the mid-1960s, civil rights and anti-war activists joined together to combat the Democratic Party's compliance with the Vietnam War and many Southern Democrats opposing the Civil Rights Act. Later, in 1966, three people ran for the House of Representatives under the Peace and Freedom Party name. Robert B. Shaw, who received 1,974 votes in Washington's 7th Congressional District. Frank Patterson, who received 1,105 votes in Washington's 2nd Congressional District and Marxist historian Herbert Apthecker, who received 3,562 votes in New York's 12th district. Then, on June 23, 1967, the National Peace and Freedom Party was created. Then, by January of 1968, they had managed to attain ballot access in California with 105,000 voters registering with the party. Then they later got ballot access in 13 more states. They held their first national convention in Ann Arbor, Michigan, from August 17th to August 18th, 1968. The two candidates running for the nomination were comedian and political activist Richard Gregory and spokesman for the Black Panther Party, Eldridge Cleaver. Cleaver won the nomination, despite not being eligible to become president, as he was only 33. Judith Mage was nominated to be his running mate. However, Dick Gregory decided to continue his run under a split-off faction called the Freedom and Peace Party with Arthur Mark Lane as his running mate. During this time, the New York faction of the party was having an attempted hostile takeover by a group of anarcho-capitalists led by Murray Rothbard, and they were clearly the minority of the party, so their attempted takeover didn't pan out. Anyways, the Cleaver Mage ticket managed to attain 0.05% of the popular vote, whereas Dick Gregory got 0.06% of the popular vote due to Cleaver being removed from certain ballots due to his age. Fun fact, the Gregory ticket actually got a vote from prominent gonzo journalist Hunter S. Thompson. However, due to their performance, they lost ballot access in all states but California. In between the 1960 and the 1972 elections, the party ran many candidates in city and statewide elections, winning many seats in city councils across California. But in the 1972 election, the Peace and Freedom Party decided to join with the Human Rights Party in Michigan and the Liberty Union Party in Vermont to create a national coalition party called the People's Party. No, not that People's Party. This is a different People's Party, which had a platform of universal health care, legalizing abortion, legalizing marijuana, a guaranteed minimum and maximum wage, the withdrawal of U.S. troops from all foreign countries, and the promotion of the toleration of homosexuality. They nominated a notable pediatrician and anti-war activist, Dr. Benjamin Spock for president, and D.C. statehood party founder Julius Thompson as his running mate. During the campaign, Spock, Hobson, and the Socialist Workers Party ticket of Linda Jennis for president and Andrew Pulley for vice president asked Major General Bert A. David for permission to distribute campaign materials at Fort Dix. But it was disallowed, so those four took them to the Supreme Court in the case Grievery Spock, which they lost. By the end of the election, the Spock Hobson's ticket managed to attain 0.10% of the popular vote. Later, in the 1976 election, the People's Party nominated community activist Margaret Wright for president and Dr. Ben Spock as a running mate. They managed to attain 0.06% of the popular vote. After this election, the coalition disbanded. In the 1980 presidential election, PFP Chairman Maureen Smith was nominated for the presidency and PFP Congressional candidate Elizabeth Cervantes Barron was selected to be a running mate. They managed to attain 0.02% of the popular vote. Then in 1984, the PFP chose to endorse the Citizens Party candidate Sonia Johnson, but rather than endorsing the vice presidential candidate Richard Walton, they chose to support PFP Chairwoman Emma Wong Marr for the vice presidency. They got 0.08% of the popular vote. However, in 1988, many people sought the PFP nomination, but the convention was deadlocked, so the national PFP refused to endorse anybody. Those candidates were New Alliance Party candidate Lenora Fulani, school psychologist Shirley Rachel Isaacson, Internationalist Workers Party candidate Herbert G. Lewin, and Workers World Party candidate Larry Holmes. Later in 1992, the PFP endorsed former Rainbow Coalition director Ronald Daniels' campaign for a better tomorrow. Native American activist Ashiba Tupachi was selected to be his running mate. They managed to get 0.03% of the popular vote. Later in 1996, 
The PFP nominated a candidate for California's 14th State Assembly District, Marsha Feiland, for the presidency, and congressional candidate Kate McClatchy as a running mate. They managed to get 0.03% of the popular vote. In the 2000 election, due to their poor performances in recent elections, they weren't on the ballot even in California. However, they managed to get back on the ballot in 2004. Three major candidates attempted to get the PFP nomination in 2004. They were Socialist Party USA candidate Walt Brown, Independent candidate Ralph Nader, and Leonard Peltier, a Native American activist arrested for the murder of two FBI agents and later attempted breaking out of prison. Congressional candidate Janice Jordan was selected to be his running mate. They managed to get 0.02% of the popular vote. In the election of 2008, four candidates for other parties attempted to get the nomination of the PFP. They were Party of Socialism and Liberation candidate Gloria Lariva, Socialist Party USA candidate Brian Moore, Green Party candidate Cynthia McKinney, and Independent candidate Ralph Nader. Ralph Nader won the nomination and Matt Gonzalez was nominated to be his running mate. They won 0.56% in the popular vote. Later in 2012, five candidates sought the party's nomination. They were Justice Party candidate Rocky Anderson, Party of Socialism and Liberation candidate Peter Lindsay, both withdrew their candidacies prior to the convention, Socialist Party USA candidate Stuart Alexander, Freedom Socialist Party candidate Stephen Durham, and comedian slash former Green Party candidate Roseanne Barr. Barr won the nomination and a notable peace activist, Cindy Sheehan, was chosen to be her running mate, but soon had disagreements with Barr and attempted to leave the ticket. But you'd already know that if you had watched my video about Barr's candidacy. All you need to know is, Barr and Sheehan got 0.05% of the popular vote. 2016's election had many strange things, one of which being Bernie Sanders trying to pull a Eugene V. Debs and tried to openly use the term socialist, albeit of the democratic variety, as a positive. He had many supporters and dissenters from socialists that make up the PFP. But anywho, the Peace and Freedom Party used that to try and make their own candidate seem a bit more appealing. They were Green Party candidate Jill Stein, who was disqualified from the ballot for unknown reasons, Perennial Workers World Party candidate Monica Moorhead, who was the subject of a satirical Michael Moore letter blaming her for Al Gore's loss in 2000, as she managed to get enough votes to steal the election from Al Gore. Psychologist Lynn S. Kahn, the only one who was purely running to be the candidate of the Peace and Freedom Party, and Party of Socialism and Liberation candidate Gloria Lariva. Fun fact, Lariva was Moorhead's running mate in the 1996 and 2000 election, ran as the Workers' World Party candidate in 1992, and continuously runs with the Peace and Freedom Party for state and local offices in California. Lariva won the nomination, but her PSL running mate, Eugene Perrier, was replaced with Native American activist Dennis Banks, as Perrier wasn't old enough to take the office as VP. Lariva earned more recognition than other Peace and Freedom Party tickets, aside from Roseanne Barr herself. It shows since she was invited to the Freed and Equal debate with Daryl Castle of the Constitution Party and Rocky De La Fuente of the American Delta and Reform Parties, she earned 0.05% of the popular vote, and aside from her run for California governor and John Thompson Parker's run for Senate, we've reached the most recent developments of the Peace and Freedom Party. So to all you socialist, feminist, peace-loving hippies, hope you can win that governorship or even a Senate place. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and click that bell to be notified when a future video of mine comes out. And if you're interested in more political content from me, you can go to my website, follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Quora. What are your thoughts on the Peace and Freedom Party? Leave a comment below. Do you like them? Do you hate them? Do you think they're a bunch of dirty socialists? Or do you think their change could actually bring benefits to America? The Peace and Freedom Party knows that I'm making this video, so they'll have a chance to actually see your viewpoints on them.